With the Art of Problem Solving, you can purchase the student book and then also the solutions manual. There is no true teacher's manual. There are a number of options for the curriculum. You can have the student go through it at their self pace. The Art of Problem Solving does have videos online that are free that you can utilize with this, or there are live classes that the Art of Problem Solving does offer. So let's look at this pre-algebra for the student. They have a how to use this book, which I strongly recommend that you read. This textbook is different than many of the math books that you've seen before. This will explain a little bit more of how this philosophy is instituted throughout the book, but most of the sections begin with the problems. The solutions will be covered later in the text, but they want the student to try the problems before because they will be solved as you read the section. So their whole idea is for you to not be scared to try a problem if you don't understand exactly how to do it, which is something that some students may have an issue with because the likelihood of them getting it wrong on the first try is really high because sometimes these concepts are things that they've just never been exposed to before. Then also you can see that they have what they call bogus solutions, which I really like because this will show that something's wrong with any solution that appears in this box. And we'll look at that later. There's also hints and then the solutions are included in this solutions manual. And then you also have additional resources that you can look to. They do recommend that you go straight through the book because it is linear in nature. They do not want you skipping around. After completing this book, students should be ready to continue with any book in the Art of Problem Solving's introduction series of textbooks. So these textbooks are the introduction to algebra, introduction to counting and probability, and then the introduction to geometry, and finally the introduction to number theory. So this again is something that is very different than what we have seen before. What you are going to cover, your scope and sequence, properties of arithmetic, exponents, number theory, fractions, equations and inequalities, decimals, ratios, conversions and rates, percents, square roots and angles. Also perimeter and area, right triangles and quadrilaterals, data and statistics, counting, and then problem solving strategies. They do also have a hint section just to selected problems. One of the things that I noticed immediately when I started flipping through this book are these that are up here. You will notice them at the beginning of the different chapters. What they are is the 24 game. So you will have to do strategic thinking to be able to solve these. Chapter one, why start with arithmetic? So you have different pieces that you're going to be looking Looking at here is a side note which talks about whole numbers, natural numbers, counting numbers, and non positive integers and non negative numbers. Then you go into addition, and here's where you're starting with your problems. How to use this book. Most sections will begin with problems like those shown below. First, try to solve the problems, then continue reading the section and compare your solutions to the solutions presented in the book. So they want you to do these problems before you ever get into the information on how to do the problems. As you can see, they do have the terms listed in bold, and then they also have important addition is cumulative. So you do need to understand these properties as you are going through. Furthermore, they show warnings. Students sometimes mix up the names cumulative and associative. So this describes the difference between the two. Now, by the end of this section, you should be able to have no issue in working these types of problems. They do have four more exercises here for you. When you get into multiplication, again, you have your problems first, and then they go into the information of how to do this problem. So this is very much a different way of thinking than what most children have been exposed to in learning um, how to do math. Here's your order of operations. So this is again is something that they want considered to be important. Your concept is key. So this is a nice graphic for concepts. This is written very much in a conversational tone. So pro what problem 1.14 shows us is that the distributive property works on sums of three or more numbers too. 
And then at the end, you will have these exercises to do. So throughout the book, what you're going to be seeing are problems to do, and then you have your explanation of them, and then more problems of that same concept so that you can become very fluent in that concept, but they want you to at first try it so that you are thinking. So you have your critical thinking. So critical thinking is something that you need to be willing to do. And again, you need to be willing to, to not know the answer, to not get the correct answer on the first try. So if we keep going, you can see this is just the same way this is set up throughout when we get to chapter four, which is fractions, you will see here is a short bit of information and then they are asking you to solve these problems. And so here is simplifying and then what for what values of n between one and 40 is n divided by seven an integer. So you need to be able to combine information, combine concepts that you know to be able to answer these problems. Then by the end of the chapter, after you have reviewed all of this, you will see that here are your exercises. As you can see, there is not a lot of white space on the page, so your student is going to need to have a notebook to be able to work these problems on, and that will increase them needing to be able to pay attention to detail, to have neatness, again, to be able to have that critical thinking, because once you, if you get the, um, incorrect answer for some of these problems. You want to be able to go back and see where the issue lied so that you do need to make sure that you show your work, even if you don't fully understand the concept and know exactly the steps that you need to take. They also have word problems that is included from squares to square roots. Um, here's challenge problems. So at the end of your chapters, you will be able to do challenge problems. Again, here's some more of your 24 games. At the end of the book, you can see there are problem solving strategies that you can do, and then there are hints to selected problems. So it's not hints to every problem, it's just selected problems throughout. So let's look at your solutions manual. Again, there is not a teacher's manual. This is your solutions manual. So for chapter one, you start out with the answers to the 24 cards. So here is your answers to those. Then for each exercise, it gives you solutions. Now you don't need the solutions to these problems because the solutions are included in the student text. It's the solutions to the exercises that are at the end of each chapter that you will be receiving in the solutions manual. It shows you how to do these exercises in your solutions manual. So let's look further back where the problems are getting a little bit more difficult. So for example, 2.7. So in this book, you will see, here's your challenge problems. So for chapter two, which is exponents, you have, here's your review problems, and then you have your challenge problems. So you do have a star on some of these problems. The stars show you that this is the hardest of the problems. So these are the very, very hard problems. And then you can see that there may be a hint for this one. But what we were looking for is 2.75. So on 2.75, here is your question. And then 2.75, here is your answer. And it shows you how to get to that answer. Then again, here's 2.76. And you can see that here is your answer for 2.76. So what this does not show you is what the question is. So here is your question. The perfect squares from one through 1,225 are per printed as sequences of digits. How many digits are in the sequence? It does not show you the question in here. The one digit positive perfect squares are one squared equals one, two squares equals four, and three squares equals nine. There are three such squares. So this does this shows you the answer, but it doesn't show you the problem. So just so you are aware that the problem is not reprinted over here in the solutions manual. Just like with the book, your solutions are in a very conversational tone. First, we need to do this, but now that we know this, so we have to consider, et cetera. So it is in a very conversational tone the way they included the answers in this solutions manual. So again, your solutions manual is just that. It is solutions 
for the exercises that are included in this book. Finally, I just want to point out these warnings. I love them because it says you need to be aware that there could be fallacy thinking. And so they show you warning, don't think like this. And I like that as well. Again, you have your review problems, then you have your challenge problems, and then you have the starred one, which are your very, very hard challenge problems.